Hello and welcome. Thank you so much to everyone who is joining live and hanging out tonight. And thank you so much to everyone who is watching the replay. I appreciate every single one of you so, so much. Let's kick it off. Let's get started with our first question. As always, what are you drinking? If you are here live hanging out, let me know in the live chat what it is that you're sipping on while we're chatting tonight. And if you are part of the replay fam, I want you to let me know down in the comments what it is that you're drinking or eating or not drinking while you are watching the replay. I just have water tonight. I am very behind on water. And after this live, I have uh, the first module of the Accelerate Your Goals course, just a lot of talking in the next couple of hours. So I wanted to make sure I stay hydrated and get my water in. So just drinking some water tonight. Let's see what we've got going on here in the chat. Some other water, water and diet, Dr. Pepper. You fit in with Texas already, Amanda. Water, more water. Tracy, it's your first live. Welcome. Thanks for joining live. Um, I love this, Amy. Water and some wine later to celebrate August. Yes, absolutely. Let's make sure we remember to celebrate the things that we are accomplishing along the way. We are so guilty. I'm so guilty of just moving on into the next month. What are the action items I'm going to take in the next month? How can I keep going? How can I keep doing and achieving and not stopping to celebrate what I did accomplish and what did go well in the month of August? Um, we got lots more water, lots more water, iced coffee, yum, making dinner. I love it. I love the multitasking. I love hearing about those of you who are making dinner or cleaning or working out or doing something while you are catching the live or catching the replay. We have some some more decaf, ice water, drinking nothing yet. Sorry, ice blanc vanilla latte. Abby, that sounds good. Good morning from New Zealand. Hello. At 10 a.m. over there, so an ice mocha. That sounds delicious as well. Thanks for sharing, everybody, and thanks for joining. Let's get to some questions. So let me know in the chat if you have a specific question. It can be about anything, goals, planning, life. If you don't want to turn it into a question and you just want to talk about a specific topic and you just have a topic you want to discuss, let me know in the chat and we can go that route as well. Um, hmm. Diane, kicking us off. I watched your video about doing one goal at a time or several at a time. Going to try one at a time since I get e easily overwhelmed. Would you recommend doing that for people that get overwhelmed? Yeah, I I recommend that method for a lot of different reasons. There's not really one specific reason why you would choose to do one goal at a time versus many goals at a time. It really just matters what works for you. And I say, if you are struggling with the many goals at a time, then try one goal at a time. You don't have to commit to it forever. You can try one goal at a time for a month, see how it goes, see how it feels, how much progress you're making. And then you can always change your mind before the next month starts what you want to do in the future. It can be helpful for people that struggle with perfectionism. It can be helpful for people who get overwhelmed easily. It can be helpful for people who are just very busy and have a lot going on to just focus on one goal at a time. It can help for people who feel regularly unmotivated because when you work on one goal at a time, you can see massive progress on one goal and it can really help motivate you to then maybe work on some other goals. So I 100% think that if that is where you feel like you are drawn to, I would pick that one goal that's important to you and give that a go. Claire, how did you find Wild You? Would you recommend? So I personally have not been able to keep up very much with Wild You. It for me, it just doesn't work well. I when I do most of my like ongoing personal development and learning, I need something um a little bit more like focus, like something a lot more specific. Most of the time it's business related. So I'm signing up for courses that are focused on my business. Actually, that's not always true because I recently signed up for a weight loss course. But I do really like investing in courses and personal development. Uh, me personally, I just like picking something that's a little bit more directly correlated to my specific goals that I'm working on right now. But on the flip side of that, the pro of Wild U is that there are a ton of courses and there's a lot of options. If you aren't sure what you want to learn more about, you have all these options and all these things you can learn from. So if that's something that's interesting to you, I would sign up for one month and see how it goes. I think the, the struggle is that it can be overwhelming when there's so many options that you really need to, I would say, pick like three of the, like there's of these big categories and focus on doing that 
Also, I would make sure that you're scheduling time in your schedule, in your planner to work on the courses. Otherwise, it's going to feel like you're never going to make any progress. Lisa, first off, happy belated birthday, Lisa. How do you keep yourself from getting into a funk when you know it would be easy to fall into? So if I feel like I'm inching my way in that direction, I immediately schedule something that I know is just going to make me happy. What can I put into my calendar that is just going to cheer me up? Is it watching one of my favorite movies, which by the way, one of them is always the parent trap. That movie just always picks me up. That or like the devil wears Prada. It's like one of my favorites. Um, if, or is it like signing up for a dance class? Like dancing is something that always helps me get out of a funk. Sometimes I do let myself wallow is how I like to describe it, but I have a time limit. So I say, okay, you have this evening, you get to take a bath, you get to listen to sad music, you get to be sad and frustrated about whatever it is. And then tomorrow you're going to wake up and you're going to get back to it. And But if you know that you can't get yourself out of it that way and you're, you're better off like swerving around the funk instead of just letting yourself sit into it for a day, then I would schedule something that just makes you happy and schedule something that makes you feel like you. Cindy, this is a great question. You want to start journaling. Do you have any recommendations? Yes, a couple of things. Number one is figure out when you're going to be journaling. Get very specific about what it what it's going to look like and how it's going to fit in your day. If you're a morning person and you have more energy in the morning, I would schedule it in the morning. If you are kind of a middle of the day energy person, I would schedule it in the middle of the day when you need a break. If you are more of an evening person, you have more energy, I would schedule it for the nighttime. So first off, when are you going to journal? Second off, what are you going to journal about? Do you just want to do a free for all journaling? That can sometimes be a little bit scary when you're first dipping your toe into it. Maybe it's Googling some journaling prompts. Moxie Life is doing a really great gratitude journaling prompt for the month of September. You can head to their Instagram and find that. That could give you a jumping off point for journaling prompts. Um, if there's another goal that you have specifically, I would Google journaling prompts for enter goal it's whatever your goal is, I guarantee you on the internet, you're going to find journaling prompts for whatever your goal is. And that could be your jumping off point. Then I would have a minimum, but then I would also have a maximum because there are days that you're going to feel like you don't want to do it at all. There's going to be days that you're like, I don't want to do it. But if you have a minimum, and when I say a minimum, I mean, when I'm, you're first getting started, like a sentence, like one sentence and start with that. And then the other reason that I have um, that I would set a maximum is because on the days that you have super high energy, you're going to you're going to go way above and beyond. And then the next day when you're not feeling that same way, you're going to feel defeated when you can't do what you did the day before. So having a minimum and a maximum can be really helpful with that as well. Abby, how do you decide what planner items to keep, use later, or de-stash? De I always think I can redate these items as well as keeping freebie and box items I otherwise would not have bought. So I had to, this was a mindset shift I had to have in general about stuff and just having too much stuff in the space. Like it is so much physical clutter can lead so much to mental clutter. And so that was a mindset shift I just had to have in general. The book Decluttering at the Speed of Life helps with that a lot um, in terms of just having less stuff. And then with planner supplies, it just falls into that same category. If I'm not going to use it within the next like three to six months, it's not worth taking up the space in my already very limited space. Um, especially if it's something that I, it's a freebie item, like it, it just get, I, I personally just get rid of it because having that space freed up makes such a difference for all of my other goals. Um, you can donate it. You can give it away. I tend to give away a lot of stuff in the Patreon group, um, which reminds me, I know I need to ship out those planners. It's not the mail's fault. It's my fault that those haven't gotten mailed out yet. <laughs> um, so I, I do that. I give away a lot of stuff, especially because you can only use so many planners. You can only use so many products. You can only use so many planners. And so I would rather free up that physical space, which I know is going to help free up that mental space for me. Brandy, have you ever tried throat coat tea? It's good for when you have a lot of talking to do. Brandy, I have not since high school. So I did theater in high school. I feel like I've probably mentioned that somewhere before. I mean, I talk about how much I love theater and love Broadway. I did theater in high school. So I did use throat coat in high school. I have not used it since because I've never really done 
like that much talking um, for long periods of time, but um, I have used it. I forgot, I kind of forgot that it existed to be honest with you. Lisa Marie, do we need anything to be prepared for the first, excuse me, first Accelerate Your Goals meeting at 7.30? Um, the handout for the first session is in the Google folder in the Google Drive. So if you have not downloaded that, go download that. Um, otherwise, no. And if you and if you don't have time to download or print it, no worries, no frets. Grab a piece of notebook paper and a pen and meet me at 7.30. Do you have a routine for using your Peloton? I am in a rut, Michelle. That's a great question. And I did just recently talk about this in the last weekly vlog that went up last Friday. So if you haven't watched that, I would watch that for more details. It took me a while to get a routine for using my Peloton. And I've done two different ways. And so maybe one of these works for you. One is I I went through and I favorited or saved bookmark, whatever you want to call it, all of, of rides that I liked that I knew I liked the music for. And I did 15 or 20 minute rides and then 10 minute arm workouts. And then every day the goal was just to do a 15 or 20 minute ride. I already knew I would like the music. So I didn't have to sit there and pick. It was just like, do the next one on the list and a 10 minute arm workout. And that's what I did pr like pretty regularly for a while. And that was working for me. And then I found this Facebook group and it's called Hardcore on the Floor. And I just, it has absolutely changed the way that I incorporate the other strength workouts into my Peloton routine. And so I use the, the program that that Facebook group lays out. And then I layer on rides on top of that, as well as stretching. Um, so check out the vlog for more information on that if you're looking for something with stretching. But I think having having a plan in advance and not just expecting yourself to make that decision in that moment, because most of the time we're not going to make the best decision. Um, and so maybe that's on Sunday, sitting down and using the scheduling tool and scheduling out all of your Peloton workouts for the week and having those decisions made in advance. Um, and then also taking advantage of the short classes, even if you only have 10 minutes, like something pops up that day and you don't feel like you can fit in a 30 minute ride, do a 10 minute one, do a 15 minute one, still valuable and still helpful for your goals, even if it's not as long as you originally wanted it to be. Uma, I cannot believe you're staying up, staying up for the live round over there. I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed. Lumi, this is a great question. Do you have any uh, tips for setting boundaries, both personally and professionally. So I think professionally is, is a hard um, place to land because everybody's job is different. And so everybody is going to be able to or not to be able to set up boundaries in different ways. For me, not having the email notifications for my work email on my phone is like the number one way that I set up boundaries professionally and then always setting it out of office, even if I'm just going to be out of the office for one day, like I'm taking one vacation day, setting up that out of office. So I don't fret about like worrying about people not, I'm not responding to them. In terms of personally, I have just had to set like limits for myself. So is that, and it depends, it varies. It varies on the season of life. What do we have going on? What are my goals looking like for that month? And it, and it kind of varies. Usually I need at least one weekend day where we don't do something socially. Like I need at least one weekend day that we're doing nothing. And I, I include Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we can do two of the three, have, have a, a thing, whether that's a meal with another couple or you know, we went and paid, played putt-putt over the weekend, like whatever that is. One of those three days, I need to have nothing planned socially. Um, I also have started to set some personal boundaries on um, like networking kind of activities. Um, my fiance, Sam is a massive extrovert. He, I always say he's like an extroverted extrovert and I'm like the, the just the one, one level of extrovert. I get energy and love being with people that I know I am drained by meeting new people. And so when he wants to go to this like fun event or this networking event, or he wants us to go to dinner with a couple that I've never met before, I have to be really thoughtful about saying yes to those things because I know that it's going to be different for me and my energy levels than seeing somebody that I know and love and and like as a friend of mine. So the, the categories we're using now is invited to the wedding and not invited to the wedding. Invited to the wedding is a lot more a lot more likely to say yes because I that I know those people and that's not going to drain me quite as much as meeting somebody new. 
Um, so just like having those kind of rules for myself just makes it easier. And it, it, it also is just like, what, what are my goals at the time? Right. Um, if we had like just moved to a new city, it might be a different scenario. Or if we were not also planning a wedding, like it just everything based on what we're going through right now. So being okay and being flexible with those boundaries changing based on what your current needs are and your current goals are. Do you have a favorite spiral journal? I don't want my flares to ghost. So Tiffany, this is tough. I don't have an answer for you here because the the plum paper spiral I do love and use for like my morning journaling and affirmations, but the flares don't work well on that paper just because they smear. It's not because they ghost, but because they smear. So um, I don't I don't really have a, sp a spiral journal that I love where my flares don't ghost. I just haven't, I haven't found one. Well, Corey, great question. What do you do when you think of a goal, but you don't have the capacity to start working on it right now? I love this question. I think I shared this over the weekend in the Patreon goal setting session, but I have these future goal lists. I, I keep like a running list of ideas of both actions and just overarching goals for a number of different categories. So I always have next month's goal ideas list. So that way, if something comes up in the middle of the month that I'm like, oh, I kind of want to work on that next month. Well, most of the time it's, I kind of want to work, work on it now, but I don't have time because I have already scheduled all my goals for this month. So I put it on next month's list. I typically have a next quarter list. So quarterly ideas, things that still fall into the 2021 overarching goals, but don't fall into this quarter's goals goes on a quarterly list. Then I also have a goal idea list for next year, whatever whatever that means, whatever the next year is. Um, so I have a 2022 ideas goal list already going. And then I also have a list for like long-term, like what are the goals that I wanna do someday? I have a space for those as well. Now I keep all of these lists on my iPad and my GoodNotes app. You can keep these wherever you wanna keep them. But that is where I, um, where I keep those lists. And I think that, Keeping those somewhere on your phone and a notebook and a notes page can be really helpful. <laughs> Amanda, I love this question. Do you ever think about a different answer after lattes with Lincoln and want to read your, your answer 100%? Pretty much every week when I go back and rewatch, there's at least one thing that I'm like, oh, I thought of something else afterwards. Sometimes, like last week, that happened and I hopped on Instagram and told you. Um, somebody asked last week what goals I've achieved in my life that I'm proud of and I realized two big ones that I'd forgotten. So I hopped on Instagram and I told you about those two goals. Um, so that, it happens pretty much every week. And that's, I mean, that's the, the beauty and also the negative of it being live. Amy, are you planning on doing Vlogmas this year? 100%. This will be the four, fourth year, whoa, that I will be doing Vlogmas. That that just, I don't know, kind of blows my mind a little bit. Um, I'm already trying to think of some different things, some unique things that we're going to do this year for Vlogmas that we haven't done before, um, but I'm really excited. Uh, Tina, you're doing Cody's Disney ride right now. I loved it. Got I love all the Disney rides are fantastic, but this is um the 20 minute Cody Disney one is great. I think my favorite one still though is Kendall's 30 minute movie buff ride that also happens to all be Disney. Loretta, back to school for me today, trying to set up routines for your workflow, your management is quite unorganized and things will crop up at the last minute. Tips for building in that flexibility. Yeah, I always just leave some extra white space. So when I, I do this all the time for planning, when I plan out my work day as well, I always try to leave at least an hour of white space when I like map out my to-dos for the day, because I know that either A, something is going to pop up, someone's going to send me an email and need me to do something that day, or B, something I planned earlier in the day is going to take longer than I thought it was going to take. It, a lot of times it's that one. Um, but I always just leave extra white space every single day because I know that that's going to happen. And then you can, if you feel like that is a waste, you're like, well, I don't want to leave white space. Like, what am I going to do if then nothing pops up? Have a like a, a second tier to-do list of things that you could do with that white space. Or you also could always rest in that white space or do something for yourself. Amy, are you using a weekly as well as a daily? So not 
well, let me rephrase that. Right now, my weekly planning is happening first in Google, Google Cal, as always. I do my weekly planning there. And then I've been using that Cultivate What Matters weekly notepad. Um, I talked about it in a couple of vlogs, but it's like got Monday through Friday across the top and just a bunch of lines vertically. That is what I've been using kind of to plan out my week. A lot of it is just kind of copy and paste from my Google Cal, but it doesn't take me all that long. And then I like being able to put it like on my magnetic um calendars so that I can see it throughout the week without having to like pull it on Google Cal. Diane, any advice on doing a goal and three things pop up and now you have more to do? So Diane, I don't know if you're talking about personal things or work-related things. Sometimes with work-related things and things pop up and you have to do them because it's your job, it's kind of that that part of it is out of your control when it's a personal thing. And when something like pops up, like what does that mean? Did it just pop into your head and you like thought about it? If that is the case, I usually write it on a sticky note, get it out of my head and I'm going to schedule it and put it somewhere later and not interrupt whatever it is that I'm working on now. Um, I don't have kids, so there are things that probably pop up that I can't anticipate that some of you deal with when it comes to having kids. And so when those kinds of things pop up and you have to, you know, drop your goals, just always make sure that you are, if you don't get to come back and finish that, you take that action item and you put it on your planner for a future date. If something pops up and it can't happen today, you need to go pick somebody up from school because they need to come home sick or whatever it is, just take that goal and put it on your calendar for a future date. Do you always rewatch your YouTube videos? Rachel, so I will re-watch -re them when I'm getting them ready to go live. So I will, just to make sure, you know, I have all the, the links and I can do the timestamps and all that kind of stuff. Um, but that's it. I don't rewatch them after that. <laughs> I rewatch the live once, again, to make sure I'm linking anything that, yeah, that I need linked. If I talked about a video, I link that, um, but then that's it. Tiffany, if I have a couple off weeks, I just want to give up for the month, do my next sending list and start again next month. Any tips for getting motivated instead of waiting for the fresh start? A hundred percent. I com I completely get that. I've 100% been there. Um, for me, it is A, focusing on how much time you have left. So I did this for August. If you, and you'll see this more coming up in my August goals video that will come out on Monday. But if you watch the weekly vlog, not this past week, but the week before last, I talk about this. I, the first two weeks of August were awful for me in term from a goal standpoint. I didn't accomplish much of anything. I didn't check a whole lot of things off. A lot of my daily habits pretty much except for sleep. I didn't do anything. And there were a couple of reasons behind that, but, and it doesn't matter. Honestly, it doesn't matter why I didn't do those things. But I, instead of looking at my, the calendar and saying, well, there's two, just two weeks left till September. I'll just not do anything for these two weeks and, and then start fresh in September. The truth is, it doesn't. I wouldn't be like standing still for those two weeks. I would likely be regressing a little bit. I would not only would I lose momentum, but I would go backwards. And so, what I decided to do was just say, "All right, well, those first two weeks weren't great. Those have passed. The time is gone. I can't get that time back, but I can control what happens over these next two weeks. And what I do over these next two weeks, even if it's small, even if it's not perfect, it's going to set me up for September, and I'm going to be a better." September me if I focus on these these two weeks. Now, that doesn't mean that I still didn't look for a fresh start. I didn't wait for the new month of, as a fresh start, but I did use a Monday as a fresh start. So if that is the case, if it if you if you're near a Monday, right, using a Monday as a fresh start, but I don't want you to wait if it's like a Wednesday, right? Right now when you're debating that, now today's the first of the month, so wouldn't necessarily be the case, but let's say it's next Wednesday. And you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't do anything for the whole first week of September. Like, I'm just ready for October. First off, there would still be three weeks left in September for you to accomplish things. And then it's it's only Wednesday. There are still two full work days, weekdays, and then the weekend left in this week. That's more than half of the week is left and things that you can still accomplish. So I think always just looking at how much time you have left and not missing out on that time. How do you find your planner style when you have all of the things and too much of all of it? That can be really 
um, overwhelming when you have all of the things and you're trying to figure out your style. The best way to figure out your planning style is just to use it. Use the products that you have, try them out with your life and your goals and your needs and figure out if they work. Sometimes that also means that we have to step back from looking at everybody else's planners. Maybe it's taking a break from Instagram and looking at planners. Maybe it's taking a break from watching Plan With Me's on YouTube. Because sometimes when we look at everybody else's planners and their spreads and the way that it works for them, we feel like, well, if it works for them, it must work for me. And that might not be the case because their lives are different than yours. Even if it feels like they're kind of the same, like you're like, oh, we both have kids around the same age and we both have a job. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work exactly the same for you. Um, and the best way to figure out if it does is just to use it. And so if you have what you feel like is too many things, I would like maybe make a list of all the planners that you have, commit to using each one for like a week, maybe even a month. And then at the end, be like, this is the one that works best for me and moving on. Lisa Marie, Vlogmas is a... Um, I almost said a concept. I don't know what to call it, but it's something that um, people on YouTube, YouTubers do in December where they post one video a day, every day from December 1st until Christmas. It's a lot of videos. It's a lot of videos. Oh my gosh. Amanda, just before the first Vlogmas. That is, that's amazing. It's been that long. It has absolutely been that long. Um, I have vlog, my personal vlogmas has evolved a lot over the last three years. If you go, I, I, don't, I almost wouldn't recommend going back and watching that first vlogmas. Um, but I will still likely incorporate some level of pre recorded content. I just, I don't anticipate being somebody who vlogs and uploads it right away the next day. That just doesn't, um, I don't know that that is in the cards. Um, but you never know. You never know what's going to happen in December. I would love to hear in the chat, if you have watched Vlogmas here before, what are the things that you loved from either last year's Vlogmas or even years before before that Vlogmas? Like what parts of Vlogmas do you enjoy? Is it just having that, um, that content every single day, something to watch? Is it something specific that you found valuable? If you're watching the replay, I would love to hear this in the comments as well as I do finalize the plans for this year's Vlogmas, I would love to hear about what you found helpful and what you, um, or what you would like to see in this year's Vlogmas. <laughs> Kira, I love the Advent wine calendar. Unfortunately, that is not going to be in Vlogmas this year. Um, oh, yeah, all the, so part of it was because it was with my mom, right? Part of the beauty of the wine calendar and the, the fun was because I got to do it with her. I won't be with her all of December this year. I actually, we don't have Aldi here. Well, we do, but we, um, the freaking New York City, not New York City, New York State laws can't sell wine and food in the same place. So our wine, our Aldi will not sell that wine at Vanilla. So I won't be able to get that. And even if I could, I don't think I would actually, to be honest with you. Um, I don't need wine every single day. I don't want wine every single day. So it was, it was really fun, but I will not be doing the wine advent calendar this year. If we, I might, the all these far. I kind of wish I could get the cheese one, but it's far. Um, yeah, I love my mom. I'll try to get my mom involved once we get to Chicago, but we'll, we are going to be going to Chicago for Christmas for like the normal amount of time that we normally go, which is usually like a week or so, maybe eight or nine days. Um, whereas last year we were there for the whole month of December because of COVID. So, um, yeah, I know it'll be fun to be back in New York for Christmas this year too. Um, which will be fun. Lisa Marie, great question. Is there a difference between wants and desires versus goals? I have a lot of things I want to do, but don't necessarily feel like all those things have to be on the timeline and be to be considered a goal. Oh, I love so many things about this question. So first off, there is no right answer to this question. It can be a want or desire for you, and it can be a goal, or it doesn't have to be a goal. I also don't think that every goal has to have a timeline. I have talked about this before, but I think that the concept of SMART goals is overrated. And I think that every goal is achievable at some point in your life, but you don't have to put that timeline barrier on that. But if it's still something that you want to accomplish, there's likely still action that you need to take 
to make that thing happen. And so putting those action steps into play, into your calendar every week, every month, every day, whatever that looks like, is still helpful to getting to that desire. Even if you don't put a timeline on the end all finish line, taking those little steps every day, every week, every month can still help you get towards that want and desire. So I guess the answer is I do think that a want and desire is a goal. I don't think that means that you need to be super rigid about it and give it a timeline. Diane, we will put up a tree. Uh, we have a, a fake tree here in New York, partially because we're just never between going home for Thanksgiving and going home for Christmas. Um, our tree window is just very small here in New York and they're very expensive. And um, one day when we live in a permanent, a more permanent residence, not that this is a permanent, you know what I mean? Like a house, we will get a real tree for like a much longer period of time. Someday. Um, we can ship the wine to you, Rachel. That's very sweet. Um, how have you been adjusting to rehearsals? Lisa, so if you don't know, I did join a dance company and I have rehearsals every Tuesday, Thursday from seven to nine out in Queens. It's a lot. It is a lot, but it's also flying by. Like the fact that it's, we're already, you know, two and a half weeks into rehearsals. So I'm also like, it. it's going to be over before I know it. So I'm trying not to focus on all the, like the parts of it that are overwhelming me. Um, you know, getting home late, staying up late on Tuesdays and Thursdays and um, and the extra time I'm spending commuting. Wait till, wait till you see this week's weekly vlog. Y'all, I spent 30 minutes waiting for a train last Thursday night. It was awful. Um, so I'm adjusting, but I also know that it's going to be temporary. Amanda, you like some kind of advent calendar, something you have once a day. I don't care what it is. Yeah, I'm I'm on the hunt. If you see an advent calendar that you think looks interesting, please send me an Instagram DM. So I'm struggling with the whole advent calendar thing because so the T ones, I feel like I never make it through. And we still have T I'm trying to make through from things. Um, if David C does like a Hanukkah style advent calendar where it's 12 T's instead of 24 T's, I will buy that one. I don't think I want the 24 T advent calendar. I will not be buying the wine one. I already said that. I don't want to buy like one of those gimmicky trinket ones. So two years ago, I did a Harry Potter one. And last year, I did the Friends one. And those little things, like it's cute. And like Amanda said, it's fun. It's that spirit. But I just like, it feels like a waste. Um, and just things that I didn't end up using or loving. So I'm really trying to figure out. I do still want to do at least one but I might splurge and do one that is more useful or something. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out what the advent calendar looks like. But so if you see one somewhere that somebody else shares or if there's one that you are looking into that kind of fits those things, like something that is more valuable and I'm willing to pay for that, right? Than like those, the Harry Potter and Friends ones that I've done. Um, something, if it is, like edible or drinkable is non-alcoholic or not tea. I just, I need a break from that David's tea one. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out. I'm still, I actually was Googling the other day. Ooh, Nicola, shop windows again. I will be, I will definitely go to the New York City windows. They change them every year. What software am I using to stream the live? It's called StreamYard that lets it pop up. I do use the paid version, which allows me to have my own uh, logo in the corner and allows me to choose the color of the, the thing that your name is on. Um, but they do have a free version. You just don't have those kind of added benefits. The paid version also is allowing me to stream this both to YouTube and to Facebook. I'm in the midst of a major life change and dealing with fear and uncertainty making this choice. Any ideas how to manage this or reassure myself that everything will be okay? Who that is really tough. Um, I did see a quote recently that kind of jumped out at me that I really loved. I needed it at the time that I saw it. And it said, everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. And I know that that's just like a quote and you're like a motivational quote is not going to change my day to day life. But maybe something like that, putting it as your phone background or sticking it to your laptop somewhere that you see that every single day, something that reminds you to push through. I also think that when you're in a time of fear and uncertainty and in reality, I mean, aren't we all in this time of uncertainty because we don't really know what or when the world is going to look like anything that we have experienced it in the past is taking it one day at a time. So 
really focusing on today. What is on my calendar for today? What is on my mind for today? What can I control today? What, how can I do my best today? How can I be my best self? How can I be my kindest self, both to myself and others today? And not worrying about the next day or the next day or the next day because some we don't know what the next day and the next day and the next day are going to hold. And that can be really hard as planners. I know it can. But one day at a time. I find I write that a lot when I'm talking about um, my personal weight loss journey and I'm talking about like my food and nutrition. I'm like one day at a time. Just focus on today. Stop fretting about the dinner you have on Saturday. Who can, That Saturday, like who can deal with that? Focus on today. Ooh, a Mary Kay advent calendar in Ulta. Yeah, maybe makeup. Mm. I love the old-fashioned advent calendar from my childhood that just had pictures or quotes instead of stuff. We always did a chocolate one. I always got a, like, a, you know, inexpensive one that had a little piece of chocolate every day. That's the advent calendar style that I grew up with. Ooh, a Sugarfina one. Ooh, that's tempting. I do love Sugarfina. An escape room calendar. Joanna, that's fun. But the UK is way more fun about advent calendars than the US. And sometimes I, we can get the ones that y'all get, but sometimes we can't. But your advent calendars are way cooler than ours. That is for sure. Ooh, a wet and wild advent calendar. That's fun. Lisa, did I complete one little word for August? No. I did not. I watched the video, but I never actually did the project. Um, I'll, I talk about that more in the goals video on Monday. Yeah, I know there's a planner calendar, the planny thing, advent calendar. Um, her vibe, and she actually said it to me last year, and I did open it as part of Vlogmas. Her style is more about like TN style planning, and that's just not what I use. So I didn't find that, that I used a lot of the stuff from that advent calendar. So it, it was a great option if that is something that you would use, but that's not something that would work for me. Ooh, a Kiehl's one. I do like that brand. That's a good one. Amy, for Vlogmas, it may sound corny, but obviously I just love having a new video from you, your favorite YouTube channel every day. Amy, <laughs> that comment just made my day. I appreciate that so much. Thank you, thank you. I, I love putting up content every single day. I love being able to be in the comments with y'all every single day. It is so much fun. Um, yeah, that very first Vlogmas, I did do it. I did a, I think it was top 10 Tuesday was the theme. And so every Tuesday during Vlogmas, I shared a top 10 list. One of them was Christmas movies. One was Christmas songs. One was Christmas memories. And then one was, I think Christmas gifts. I can't remember. I think it was Christmas gifts I give in, but it could have also have been great gifts that I received. I honestly don't remember. That was a long time ago. Yeah, Alexa, I did see that jam one. I saw Mackenzie uh, that I follow on Instagram um, share that one, and I thought about it. But I don't, I don't know what I would if I would have jam every day. I don't know what I put it on. Nicola, speaking of Christmas, have you ever seen the Rockettes? When I was in New York, I saw their Christmas show, and it was amazing. Yes. So the year that my parents came to New York for Thanksgiving, I think that was 2019, also. Um, they came to New York for Thanksgiving. We saw the Rockettes when they were in town. Um, and it was amazing. I, I also saw the Rockettes do, they had this like in like the summer show. It was Sam and I's like kind of first official outed outing date. We had had dinner at my apartment, like was our first kind of my first date. Um, but our first like date out doing something, we went and saw the Rockettes. Um, they did like a summer show one year. I just love watching them. I love watching the Rockettes. I could watch them do anything. They're like one of my favorite things to look for in the Macy's Parade every year. Great question. Do you meditate or have ways to calm your mind when you're under stress? So no, not really. I'm not a meditator. I've tried, I've tried to be a meditator and I just, I get bored. My mind, I just, it doesn't really work well for me. Um, for me, when I'm under stress, I bubble baths are my go-to. So it's, I mean, it's a form of meditation. I read a lot. Like I escape into a story when I'm under stress. Um, and then I also just spent spending time with people I love. Going back to what I talked about earlier, being an extrovert, when I am stressed, I, I surround myself with the people that I love and know well. And it 
lets me forget about all the things that are causing me stress. And that really helps me relieve my stress. <laughs> lots, lots of saying, yeah, no, with any advent calendar could be better than me and my mom and the wine and cheese. That was so much fun. Having being with my mom all of last year's was amazing. Lisa Marie, no, Lattes with Lakin is not patrons only. It's for everybody. You can screenshot anything and share it. Yeah, this is always up public on YouTube. Um, are you playing fantasy football this year? Amanda, yeah, we talked about that a few weeks ago on the live. I think it may have been the week you were on vacation. Um, but I am in three fantasy football leagues. One is through work. It's a bunch of women that I work with. One is, and then one with each side of my family. So my mom and stepdad and all my brothers on that side. And then my dad and my stepmom and my brothers on that side. And then we also have another family that's part of that. It's like two families together because um, we're both odd numbered families. So we come together and make an even numbered. That is the only one I've done the draft for. The other two we have not drafted yet. We're drafting next week. Lisa, what has been the highlight since we met last week? Probably that Pixar putt putt place. It was just so fun. It was just so unique and cool and fun and different. And I just really loved that. Um, that was probably my highlight from last week. I love that we're talking about advent calendars in September. <laughs> I feel like fall kind of starts today. And honestly, it felt like fall outside today. Now it's raining. So it's a uh, very fall vibes here in New York. But um, I love that we're talking about um, <laughs> advent calendars. Am I still doing no BS? Wondering how that's going because I'm looking so vibrant. Thank you. That's such a sweet compliment. I love that that descriptive, vibrant. Um, I am still doing no BS. I'm still working through it. The, that program and community is just fantastic. Honestly, losing weight aside, I have shifted so many mindsets and been done so many so much. She calls it thought work in the no BS program. If you've never, if you've never, if you haven't heard me talk about it, it's a weight loss program. I'll leave it linked below afterwards changing my life in more ways than one. Um, she has a free podcast. It's called Losing 100 Pounds with Corinne. If you want to start there, she does swear, full disclosure. But I love it. And it's going really well for me. Um, I just love it. Lumi, advent calendars or wax melts? If I could find a candle advent calendar, that's the answer. Lisa, I have another one this week. What is one thing that surprised you this week or caught you off guard? Oh my gosh, that's a hard question. I don't know. I don't know what surprised me this week. If I, if I think about it, I'll come back to you. What is your favorite thing about fall in New York? Um, just the, the weather, the humidity going away and the weather. My favorite thing about fall in general is probably football though. So coming soon. Did you start your tending list for September in your Cold Boot Matters Planner? Yep, that's what's right behind me. The video for it will be out on Monday, though. Rachel, what kind of camera do you use? So for this, it's just my computer. That's all this is. Um, but my actual camera, which I can actually see because I had it set up, is the Canon G7X. That's the camera. It's linked in my Amazon store, which is always linked in the description box of all my videos. What are you reading? Fiction and nonfiction. So nonfiction, I'm reading We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rogers. So good so far. Oh my gosh, so good. Um, fiction, I'm reading The Night Circus, I think is what it's called. I just started it though, so I'm like not that far. Into it. All right, it looks like I'm all caught up. And because I need to slam some dinner before I head over to the Accelerate Your Goals course tonight, I am going to end this one a little bit early this week. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you my question, which is what is one thing that you are going to do this week to make progress on your goals? What is one small step? It is the first week of a month, brand new week, brand new, fresh start, fresh month, not week, brand new month is what I meant to say. What is one thing that you will do this week to make progress on your goals? Let us know in the chat. If you're here live, if you're watching the replay, I want you to let us know in the comments what is one thing that you are going to do this week to make progress on your goals. Rosie, I'll answer your question really quick. If I was starting social media over, um, I would still use Instagram. Instagram and YouTube. It just fits the best for me and my personality. Um, Twitter, I'm not concise, so that just never really worked well for me. Um, 
and I feel like I'm not professional enough for LinkedIn. <laughs> I mean, I have a LinkedIn for my work, but um, going to work on your tending list. Yep, it is not too late to set up your tending list or your goals in your Moxie Life or whatever planner you use for September. If you are a patron, head over and watch the replay from Saturday. It was fantastic. Um, accelerate your goals module one. See you soon. Reevaluating all your goals and renewing your focus. I mean, I love that. There's still four months left in the year. You can accomplish so many things. Lisa, figure out your next financial goal and break the steps down. Tracy, you just hit 50 pounds. Congrats. Celebrate. Obviously, if you need to keep going, if you want to keep going, do that. But celebrate that moment and be proud of yourself. Reading a few pages a day without feeling guilty. I love that, Uma. 64 ounces of water a day. Such a good one. Do your daily action items list every morning. Accelerate your goals and five-minute stretch on Peloton tonight. Just a stretch. Five minutes. Five. We spend five minutes doing all kinds of things. Setting up your goals. Nicole, no stress. No stress. You'll get to them, and you'll start them next week. You just joined Patreon. Welcome. That's so exciting. Um, yeah, watch the goal planning video. The replay is up, and you can set all of your goals for September. Prioritize goals for September. So excited. Sure oh, calm down, Siri. Calm down. I love it. Y'all, you're the best. This is one of my favorite things every week. And I, I am cutting it short tonight because I have to eat before I celebrate your goals. Next week, we will do our full hour. Um, but thank you for hanging out with me tonight. If you would mind giving this video a thumbs up before you head out, I would greatly appreciate that. And if you're new here, click that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday focused on helping you achieve your goals. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great night.